All right, I locked the jib, and I'm still at about half a thousandth free play there. And uh, I've got one other test I need to do, which is I need to check and make sure that I'm not binding. And it feels about the same, so I don't think I don't think it's binding. No, maybe it is. Well, the lock's unlocked. Hmm. I think that might be a little too tight. All right, I just uh, loosened that jib adjustment on the top, a quarter turn, and then uh, snugged up the bottom lock again, and now, Spoke too soon. Do you hear that noise? What's happening is that knee is hanging up, and as I lower it, it falls that tiny bit. It wasn't doing that before. And I know my knee lock is not on, so that's not the problem. Well, I think I figured something out. I didn't like how bad the table was binding with that, uh, with the tightness of the jib that I had. So I decided just for the heck of it to put the indicator on the side of the knee, which is what they show in the manual. And what I found when I did that was that I got a much, uh, much less of a reading than with it on the top. So it turns out, from what I can tell, having the indicator up there on the top is not a good idea as far as using that to check for this uh, measurement. Because when I, when, when, when Keith Rucker did it in his video, he, he seemed to have no problem with it. But I'm having all kinds of trouble here. So I've loosened the, uh, the jib up so that the uh, the knee is um, moving more freely now, but now I've got it a little bit too loose. But just, I mean, it's quite a bit looser than I had it. And with the indicator on the side, you can see that I'm getting oh probably about two and a half thousandths. Whereas uh, if I had if I put that on the top right now and measure, it's going to be over five. So. I think I've got to use it in this position to make this adjustment. So now, leaving it in this position, I'm going to work back to uh, uh, tightening this jib up again and getting it to uh, about a half a thousandth. All right, I'm pretty close now. Maybe just a hair more. I'm pulling up on this table pretty darn hard to do that. So let me just make sure that my locking bolt is going to lock okay. Although, actually, it should because I got the long one in there. The question is now is, it, uh, is this bolt going to be too long? In which case, I might have to try and put the old bolt back in. My fear is that this one's too long, and then the next one's too short. <laughs> Guess if I had to, I could cut a quarter. I could make a two and a quarter inch long one. The reason why I say that is because this feels like it's tight all the way. It's very hard. It's recessed in that hole. The other thing that doesn't help matters is that is that uh, spacer in there kind of gets uh, cocked in the bore and can create a situation where it sticks. I can't tell whether or not that's stripping or what's going on there. That's not moving much. Okay, now I'm tightening up against that. That should... 
That should be tightened up. Yeah, that should be good. Now, I just gotta get this out of the way and check for how the uh, knee feels. You know, listen for any strange noises. I don't want any unwelcome popping sounds indicating that it's still hanging or that the uh, jib is moving. Oh, that's a lot smoother. Feels much better. All right, yeah, I think that's more like where we should be. Let me run it up near the top, higher up. Kind of more in line with where I suspect I might be having it positioned a lot during milling of a small piece in a vise. Alright, let's try there. That yeah, looks pretty good. Now, indicator needle is moving only one division, which I, again on that particular indicator is half a thousand. And that's a little over the uh, tolerance, I think, that was printed in the catalog. But I'm not going to mess with this anymore until I uh, see. Because if it, if it seems to give me a decent finish and I don't get a lot of chatter and stuff with, uh, with it set that way, then uh, I'm not going to mess with it. It's just uh, it's been a real pain up until this point. Like I said, I think right now I've got it set to a workable position. It's kind of like uh, sometimes you get something really close and you just keep nudging it and nudging it, trying to get even closer when you should have gave up a while ago and then you find out that you start going there. Things start going the other way on you. Well, I gotta go pick up the kids just in time because I just finished with this jib episode and uh, my battery's dying. But the next time I come down here and work on this, we'll be looking at putting some power to this motor in the head unit. we got to get some three-phase power. Well, we're coming near the end of uh, the reassembly on the mill here. I've been doing a little bit of housekeeping. Uh, I put on the, uh, put those access covers back on. That's where those big holes were that I was uh, running my strapping and everything through to lift the body of the mill. Figure I don't need those to be wide open anymore. I was thinking I could use them to throw my empty beer cans in, but I don't really drink uh, beer in a can, so... Anyways, uh, put on my uh, covers and wipers on the rear here and even the little caps. Got the back one all... Uh, managed to straighten that out again after bending it up. <laughs> Got that all on. I've got to put the front one on, but I couldn't find where the front one was, and actually, when I went to look for it, it actually answered another question I had which was I had a problem with uh, the table lock wasn't working could screw it all the way in and it wouldn't tighten the table and uh, I was thinking to myself gee I wonder if the little piece that this pushes on that's got a slant on it I wonder if that's in there and then, lo and behold I went and found my bucket that had the parts in here and found my wiper covers and all that and then also realized oh yeah duh I took off the uh, quill lock hadn't put that back on yet that's in there and then lo and behold right here look at what I got but yeah that's my missing table lock so as far as this goes this has got a bevel to it so this uh, lines up with the dovetail and I can look over here at the dovetail to see that the way I want this to go in is definitely with the uh, long longer side facing up so see if I can't get that to go in without turning all right all right so that should be locked right there and it is and unlocked all right so that's all set 
I'll put my uh, put my wipers, way wipers and cover on on this side. I guess I'll put the quill lock on. All right. All right, and the return spring seems to be working. Uh, oh yeah. Forgot one more thing on those wiper covers. Forgot to put that little cap. Use needle nose pliers and bam, bend these little tangs out a little bit. Yeah! All right, tell her I'll be up in uh, about 10 minutes. Gotta put up the Christmas tree. First week in December. Some people put them up earlier. Here, in our household, life just gets in the way. Sweet. I think the next time I come down here to work on this, I will be talking about the magic of making three-phase power appear out of my basement shop.